Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and today I'm showing you how to make almond flour crackers. I've been making this recipe for keto crackers for years and I loved it so much and readers on the blog loved it so much that I included it in my first book, The Easy Keto Cookbook. I'll link it down below in case you want to pick up a copy. So these low carb crackers, there are so many reasons to love them. You only need two ingredients to make them. Yes, really two, unless you count salt, then it's three, I'll give you that. And they're naturally gluten-free. Reason number two, they're crispy and crunchy. They have the perfect texture. Number three, they only take about 20 minutes to make. About 10 minutes or so of prep, and then 10 minutes or so in the oven. They're super quick, so you could be enjoying a snack really, really fast. And reason number four, they have a really neutral flavor, which is great because they go with just about anything. They remind me of those club crackers I used to eat as a kid. Have you ever had those? And reason number five, in case you didn't want the neutral flavor, they're super easy to customize. You can add herbs, spices, cheese. You can even make a sweet version. I'll explain how to do all that at the end of the video. Last thing, if you want your almond flour crackers to look like mine, pick up a bag of Wholesome Yum almond flour. This is what I use in all my low carb baked goods. It has this really fine consistency, which is gonna be really nice for crackers because they're not gonna be gritty. They're gonna have a really nice texture, pretty close to regular white flour crackers with a little bit of almond flavor in there, which I think is just delicious. I'll link down below where you can get a bag of this. It's available on my website or on Amazon. But for now, we're making these keto crackers with almond flour. They could not be easier, and I can't wait to show you. Let's do this. To begin, I'm going to line a medium sheet pan with parchment paper. The parchment paper is really important to prevent sticking, and be sure you're using parchment and not wax paper, which is not oven safe. So I like to cut mine along the edges just to make it nice and neat, but you can skip this step if you like. So once you have that cut to size, go ahead and set that aside. Now I'm going to mix up the keto cracker dough. I'll start with two cups of wholesome yum blanched almond flour and half a teaspoon of sea salt. And go ahead and whisk that all together. A whisk helps break up all the lumps so that it's super smooth. And be sure you're using blanched almond flour here. This is gonna give you the best texture, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So once that's all nice and uniform, go ahead and crack one large egg into the center. You don't even have to whisk it separately, I just whisk it a little bit in the middle here before mixing it in with the rest of the ingredients. Once that seems like that's pretty uniform, I go ahead and switch to a spatula and then just kind of press and mix. It takes a little bit of effort and it seems dry and crumbly at first, but just keep going until you get this kind of moist, crumbly texture. And now I'm just going to form this dough into a ball. So you can just kind of press it together with your hands and just keep adding until it's all combined into a ball. The dough should not be too sticky, but if you find that it is too sticky to work with, you can refrigerate it or you can oil your hands a little bit with some olive oil or avocado oil and that will make it easier to work with. And now we're ready to roll out the dough. So place the ball of dough between two pieces of parchment paper and then press that down with your hands into a disc. And then you can use a rolling pin to roll that out as thinly as possible. The parchment paper does have a tendency to slide around on the counter a little bit, but just do the best you can. Sometimes I kind of go like this, do whatever works, but you do want to get this as thin as possible, at most an eighth of an inch thick, even a sixteenth is even better. Now I'm kind of regretting right now that my egg was a little bit on the smaller side. You'll notice my dough is a little bit crumbly and it tends to crack if that happens. That's okay though, you can still make it work. And the other thing you're gonna see is it doesn't roll out into a perfect rectangle. So you can just pick up the pieces and kind of reattach them to form a rectangle. Once you have your dough in a uniform rectangle and you've made sure that the thickness is even, this is really important, you can go ahead and cut it into crackers. If your dough is a little on the drier side like mine, you'll notice it might crack as you do this, but you can easily just press it back together. If your egg is larger, you won't have this issue. You'll notice my blog photos did not have this issue quite as much. So I like that classic club cracker look. So I'm cutting these into rectangles. You can also do squares, totally up to you. Once your keto crackers are cut, you can transfer them to the lined baking sheet. Again, mine are a little bit fragile here. So if they break apart as you pick them up, you can just press them back together, no problem. And I love this little spatula I'm using. I'll link it down below. It's really convenient for picking up really thin foods like this. 
So go ahead and arrange your keto crackers on the lined baking sheet. You do want space between them, so keep that in mind. If you realize that all your almond flour crackers won't fit on your baking sheet, no problem. You can cook them in batches or you can grab a second baking sheet. But once you have them all on there, the next thing we're going to want to do is poke holes in the top with a fork, just like this. Use your fingers to kind of hold the dough down as you press. This will prevent them from breaking. And these holes are important. They prevent bubbling up and they help the crackers cook more evenly. Now we're ready to bake. Bake your almond flour crackers at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about eight to 12 minutes. The time will vary depending on how thick you rolled them out and they do go from golden to burned pretty quickly, so just watch them carefully toward the end. And you will notice that if your dough is dry like mine was, they tend to crack a little bit, but they're still gonna be delicious, I promise. It's best to let the crackers cool for a few minutes in the pan, but once they feel sturdy enough, you can go ahead and transfer them to a plate. You can store your low carb crackers in the pantry in an airtight container for about a week or two, or if they last that long, you can freeze them for several months if you need to. That's it. This was super easy and now I have the perfect snack for my movie night tonight. So last thing, I promised you that I would tell you how to customize these crackers to add different seasonings or make them sweet. So if you want sweet crackers, all you have to do is replace two or three tablespoons of the almond flour with Bestie Sweetener instead. That's gonna taste just like sugar, so it's gonna be a really neutral flavor, no aftertaste and that makes sweet crackers. You can also add some seasonings in there, like some cinnamon, anything you like. Or for savory seasoned crackers, all you do is add about a teaspoon of your favorite seasoning. I like Italian seasoning or everything bagel seasoning. You can also add a little bit of garlic powder. You do you. Let me know in the comments below if there's seasonings you like on crackers. Okay, I'm trying one of these. These are so buttery. A little bit of almond in there. You are going to love these. I hope you'll make these keto crackers soon. If you do, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you added some other seasonings. I always love hearing new ideas for those. And snap a photo, post it with hashtag Wholesome Yum so that I can see it too. See you next time on Wholesome Yum, where I share easy, healthy, and keto recipes, all with 10 ingredients or less.